In the news tonight, another community is divided over hydrofracking. Verizon rise workers rally nearly two weeks into a strike. How are negotiations going tonight? And Made in America grants aim at bolstering high-tech manufacturing jobs in New York State. And a couple of showers have developed and they're moving through portions of the area. We'll track the scattered rains coming up. Where the news comes first. You're watching News Channel 2 at 10 on Central New York CW11 with Bill Warden. Tonight's top story, town officials hope to educate the community about natural gas drilling. Good evening, Bill is off tonight. I'm Dave Delachase. We begin tonight in Otsego County, where people who live in the town of Morris want town officials to ban the controversial practice of hydrofracking. Hydraulic fracturing involves shooting water at a high rate of speed into the earth, breaking up shale and releasing natural gas. Residents presented a petition that some say 75% of registered voters signed, asking the town to ban the practice. Instead, town officials put together a committee and decided to host a forum about hydrofracking, hoping to dispel any myths. The town to be informed. It's a big decision, we think, the possibility of gas drilling and the, the changes it could make in a small town. Gas drilling is by far and away the most important issue. There's never been anything like this, I don't think, in memory in New York State. It's divided the communities, but it's also brought a lot of us together for a common cause and common interests and common values, values that concern the long term. Hydrofracking may change the face of politics in the town. Winchester says seven or eight people plan to run for town board, and she herself will run for county board. An update tonight on the manganese levels in the Mohawk Valley Water Authority system. Tests this afternoon show the levels are lower than they were yesterday. The acceptable level is 0 .05 parts per million. Last week, levels of the Mohawk Valley water supply were more than double that at 0.11. Treatment over the weekend brought the level down to 0 .03 on Tuesday, but a lapse in treatment on Tuesday doubled the level to 0 .06 on Wednesday. Today, as expected, the manganese level is back down to 0.04. Well, hundreds of local Verizon workers have been walking the picket line for nearly two weeks now. Today, the president of Local 1126 rallied the troops for a pep talk behind labor offices in downtown Utica. Among the crowd, leaders from other unions who came to support the members. Retired Verizon workers came to show their support as well. The striking workers, around 300 locally, say they'll walk the picket line for as long as it takes. In 1989, it was about medical benefits only. Uh, this time, it's about everything. It's about every middle class job, uh, creating jobs, keeping good jobs in the United States, not outsourcing them, sending them overseas. So it's, it's, it's a line in the sand that we had to take a stand on. Verizon company spokesperson John Bonamo says, quote, Verizon provides good jobs that have competitive pay and benefits. Verizon will negotiate in good faith to reach a final agreement that balances the needs of all parties. Well, a Utica man faces robbery and assault charges tonight. New Harvard police say a woman was heading to her doctor's appointment Monday afternoon in the Utica Business Park when Andondris Morrison of Dudley Ave grabbed her purse and tried to flee. The two struggled for a brief time until she fell to the ground. Police say the woman's leg was broken in two places requiring immediate surgery. Morrison is charged with robbery and assault. The Shenango County Sheriff's Department is investigating a deadly accident that happened yesterday afternoon on Route 8 in the town of New Berlin. Deputies say 21-year-old Shane Romanowski's car crossed the center line and hit a tractor trailer head-on. Romanowski was pronounced dead at the scene. The other driver was not injured. Officials say speed was not a factor in the crash. The Sheriff's Department continues their investigation tonight. Well, firefighters made quick work of a fire that broke out in the attic of a Utica home this afternoon. Crews responded to 1203 Hammond Ave in Utica shortly after 3 p.m. today and found smoke coming from the attic of the home. Officials say all the people inside the structure got out safely. There was also one dog inside, but crews were able to get the dog to safety as well. Firefighters discovered a small fire in the attic that at the time appeared to be electrical in nature. They had the fire under control in a matter of minutes. Well, a Utica man is accused of trying to set fire to his ex-girlfriend's home. Police say Damon Blue broke into the basement of Tilden Ave Homes last night. The owner heard noises and called police. When they arrived, they found Blue still in the basement and in possession of a backpack that contained lighter fluid, a brick, and paperwork, along with a metal rod used to pry the window open. An investigation revealed Blue intended to set fire to the home. He is now charged with burglary and attempted arson.
Time for a first look at the forecast. Here's meteorologist Adam Musset. Good evening, Adam. Good evening, Dave. Still tracking a couple of showers across portions of central New York. It was dry for much of the day. Then this evening, an area of showers blossomed up, and it's still affecting portions of our viewing area. We had a shower roll through our backyard about a half hour ago. I want to step away. We'll take a closer look at areas being impacted by the rain late this evening again. It's not raining everywhere. Northern Oneida, Lewis, Northern Herkimer, Otsego and Shenango counties have been dry, but southern portions of Oneida County and eastern Madison County, that's where the rain has been occurring. Sequoia, Cassville, Bridgewater, back over to Hamilton, still some showers around. These showers will push eastward and affect areas right along the Route 20 corridor over the next half hour to one hour. We'll put a storm track on this batch of rain. Mapledale, West Winfield, by 1015 to 1022, we'll see some showers, some briefly moderate to heavy downpours, but no severe weather, nothing like that. Just a shower here or there, and then things will quiet down as we head toward the midnight hour. Temperatures tonight falling back through the 60s, 60 degrees by 5 a.m. and into the lower 60s by 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. All the seven-day forecast coming up in just a bit. Dave. Thanks a lot, Adam. U.S. Senator Kirsten Gillibrand was in Oneana today to announce her new manufacturing agenda. Gillibrand's Made in America competitive grant will help retool struggling high-tech manufacturers. Computer jobs are in high demand. And Gillibrand hopes this grant will spark a growth in the sector. New York's manufacturing jobs have been hit hard in comparison to other states across the country. Absolutely. We would love to have the benefit, uh, like so many of our competitors have, with either state or uh, national resources that essentially support the growth of those companies. So our competition already gets that kind of thing. We would very much benefit from that as well. Gillibrand made the announcement today at Ioxys in Oneana, which manufactures ultra capacitors. Well, at some point over the past two weeks, someone caused severe damage to some headstones at a local cemetery. State police say seven of the older tombstones at the Penn Mountain Cemetery in Steuben were damaged. They are the oldest in the cemetery, all from the 1800s, and one that dates back to 1815. The cemetery is located off of the Penn Mountain Truck Trail. Anyone with information on how these headstones were damaged is asked to call the state police in Remsen. Their number is 315-831-4177. Well, still to come tonight on News Channel 2 at 10, a network anchor laughs uncontrollably on live TV. We've got the video. And a Bridgewater man is taking advantage of...